prophesy to you go forward go forward go forward go forward I release you 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 we are on the edge of a mighty revival in the whole world and particularly in Nigeria I think it will begin in Europe land that may upset a few tribes but I think it will begin in Europe land I've been sowing the gospel for 45 years in Europe land and God is not a foolish farmer he doesn't sow and not reap and I'm going to see the reaping and the reaping is coming very soon there's going to be a mighty revival and thousands hundreds of thousands are going to be converted every day coming into the place where they can get food the reason why it is not taking place now is because God hasn't got enough men ready to take over and lead them the prospect for evangelism is great wonderful but don't tie it down to ordained trained workers it will be done by ordinary men and women filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with the joy of the Lord and what God has done in their lives. The prospect is wonderful and I'm looking forward to seeing a great harvest. It will cover the whole of Nigeria and Nigeria is God's instrument for the rest of West Africa. Well, many missionaries, Nigerians, please, will go from Nigeria to the other countries and take the gospel with them and Africa is going to be shaken than any other continent has ever been shaken before. Uh, do you have any regret for over 56 years to answer your call to Nigeria? None, whatever. If I had the time all over again, I would do it again. And I haven't finished yet. The end is not in sight, and the last few years of our lives will be much more glorious, much more fruitful than any years we have spent in Nigeria. I haven't been out of this country for over 20 years, 22 years now, and I have no intentions of going. This is the place where God is working. This is the place where the revival is going to be. This revival in this country will outshine, out mover and outpower any revival in any other country that I know of at the moment. Mama, say a few closing words to us. What, what's your advice to women generally in short words? Well, that's a very difficult question, but my great advice to women throughout the country is that they want, they want to be married, but they want to be women first, really, and they are not. Their one desire is to get a husband or children, and their one is their great need in this country is to get women that are really women that know what God wants to do with a woman and God has a great work for women <laughs> I do I say now some women today uh, are very clever they are hospital matrons and they are principals of colleges and God has got a work for women in this country apart from marriage, marriage is the first Marriage, I'm sure God is looking and longing for happy marriages and happy homes where Christ lives in this country, and there are very few. But apart from that, God has got to work for women if they're desiring to serve Him. How do you now spend your leisure? At, uh, uh, you, you mentioned a while ago that uh, you officially retired. I've never seen you retired. I still see you go to all the universities, talk to medical students, engineers, lawyers, and so on. And people come here daily from all walks of life. And uh, you still uh, counsel them and give them advice and uh, uh, counseling. Uh, what do you do now, mainly? Oh, we're still continuing our ministry according to our strength. I have been preaching five times this week five messages already this week in this very week and this is Thursday so that was that then we are still writing still writing articles another new magazine is going to be going to be produced we are the uh, are producing the articles for that uh, letters there's a whole pile of letters on my desk and there's no single day here without a, a number of callers and visitors from all over the country uh, for advice, for leadership, 
We're not able to travel as much as we would like to, but they're coming here instead of us going there. We're still very, very busy indeed. What will uh, you say is your personal hobby? Personal hobby? Writing. Writing for the, 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 the people of God in this country. What, Mama, what will you say is your personal hobby? Well, I haven't got a hobby now, <laughs> but I have to do a lot of work. I'm still thanking God every day for my health and strength. I know you love gardening. No, oh, I can't. See. I don't do much gardening anymore. I used to do a lot, but I don't do it now. Those pets that come to visit. I get this. The, I've got a lot of wild pets. There are two families of little chickens that come to call me for their food every day, and they don't belong to me. There's two birds that come and call me for their food, and if I give them their food and not their water, they run to their plates and shout, and I go and give them their water. And there used to be a, an old goat that came regularly and asked me to give her the empty, empty her the buckets of the orange peel and that, but she's gone. They've sold her, I expect. But my hobby, uh, uh, I don't know what my hobby is, except to do my job. I get plenty of washing and ironing and all that every week. You used to do washing and ironing at your... Yes, I do all. Every week. every week I wash about five or six shirts and all my own dresses, all our underclothes, and I press them all. We have a washing machine, which we wash the bed linen and the towels and that, but all the pressing I do myself. Do, what do you do? What do you contribute to the house maintenance yourself? Not, not, not very much now, because I'm... What well, for? What? Oh, it's to help with the washing. What about cooking? No, no I don't do any cooking. I can cook. <laughs> <laughs> I do all my own baking. Yes, 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 all my own baking, yes. I do all my own cakes. Yeah. I have a cook for What would be your advice, Mom, uh, in final word for me to you about pastor's wife's hospitality ministry? Because every time I've been coming to this house, after sitting down, the first thing you ask us, what will you drink, tea or coffee? Because okay, we bring this, you ask us what time are we living to ask questions about food, what, what well, do you think? It all comes back to the same thing, whose home is it? Everybody that comes here, they belong. I, this home belongs to Jesus Christ. It's not for me to say who should come or what shall they have. They have what I've got. As, you, as I've told you this morning, I had very little to offer you. But uh, that doesn't worry me. God knew you were coming and he knew my strength to work. But a pastor's wife should be willing to receive everybody in the name of the Lord. And I thank God for the many people who come here and go away and say they met Jesus Christ in this home, black and white. The reason I ask that, ma'am, is uh, when your house becomes a place of daily receiving visitors, I am asking, does that bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. God gives us all the strength we need. The only thing that bothers me sometimes, I think, is my husband working too hard. <laughs> But the Lord gives us all the strength we need, so that's it. That's all that bothers me. Why I ask that is, um, I think, from my own experience, it's a great blessing. I think there are pastors that would have desired to be visited and ask questions. And some don't have anybody to talk to them. And people like you, that people come to ask questions, do you get frustrated that you have been troubled for coming to ask you spiritual questions? And, uh, and no, 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 we welcome it. 